Today we are at Doughboy's Pizza in Orlando, Florida. Mike and Mario opened up this shop because they wanted to replicate the New York style pizzeria that they had back where they were from in New Jersey and New York. And they did it in Orlando, Florida with Doughboy's. They're going to show us around the kitchen, tell us the story about how they started and how they found each other. And also Mario Senior makes an appearance to tell us how he taught these boys everything they know when it comes to making pizza. This is a great episode. You're going to learn a lot about marketing. We talk about influencer marketing. We talk about getting started in the pizza business and why it's important to kind of stick to a good quality product and then learn to get as many people to talk about it as you possibly can. Let's get right to it. Thank you for having me guys, this is great. Tell us a little bit about your business, how you guys got started, how you got to this location. All right, my name is Mario. Uh, this is Doughboy's Pizzeria. We're out here in Oviedo, Florida. Um, born and raised in New York City. Lived there my whole life up until just a year ago when uh, my best friend for since high school has been asking me to come down here and open up a shop and I kept saying no, I didn't want to do it. And then uh, finally, you know, things got a little bad up north. So I said, all right, let's take a shot. And uh, he got me down here. We found this place, we checked it out and took a shot and it just exploded. We knew like no matter where we went, like we were gonna have good pizza. We knew that, but we didn't know how good it was gonna be. Hold on, are you the friend that he said? He <laughs> okay, that's him. All right, he doesn't like to be on camera that much. Yeah, but you guys are partners, business partners here. Business partners, brothers. Right, you good. know, been friends all these years. He moved down here a few years ago, and he's been telling me he grew up on my dad's food on our pizza. We used to a lot of late nights, you know, going through the fridge for cold pizza. <laughs> so he knew what the quality was. He knew what he was missing, and he said he couldn't find nothing like it down here, and. That's it, you know, he got me down here. What's it like live, moving to so Florida for, from New York? It's the same, I mean, uh, I'm in a pizzeria, all my customers are from New York, and uh, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of the same. The only difference is like on my day off, I'm driving around and I'm like, what the hell what kind of bird is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, like so that's about it. it. Yeah. There's no pigeons, it's like yeah. birds with really long legs and dinosaurs yeah that's what they look like pterodactyls <laughs> yeah. you know? so, so it's fun it's fun can we take a tour around yeah let's do it right, let's go yes. so we're gonna take a tour inside show All us right. the pizza give us like a little description like you what kind of pizza shop are you guys take out, delivery. Oh, yeah, everything good yeah, all right so we're a new york style pizzeria uh i didn't know what new york style pizza was until i moved to florida because seriously yeah i had no idea it was a thing i really didn't know it was a thing i grew up up there so we don't call it new york style pizza, pizza in new york right, right it's just yeah. pizza. So we didn't know. So, you know, New York style pizza is you walk in and there's a showcase and you got an assortment of slices and you serve pizza by the slice. That's also something that I didn't know didn't exist down here. People really don't sell, you know, by the slice. Yeah, I've been to a lot of places in Orlando and Florida. They don't have like the showcase. Right. Yeah, it's more like a takeout delivery kind of thing. Right. So, and that was one of his big things. He's like, man, I can't go nowhere and get a couple slices. Like, and then if I, if there is a place where I can go get a couple slices, I gotta like sit down and have waitress and this and that. It takes me 20 minutes to get a slice of pizza. So we wanted to emulate, you know, how we grew up. Go in, let me get a slice of this, slice of that. Boom, go sit down and get your pizza. We didn't want to have a big, drawn out process. We just wanted to keep it simple. We got all the pizzas that everybody could want. You know, for the most part, this thing, we fill this up throughout the day, but towards the end of the night, obviously, we don't keep replenishing it. Do people come in here for slices all day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We get people all day. So I try to keep it full, but once dinner time gets yeah. going and that pizza station gets busy, I can't stop to make slice pies. You know, right. I got to keep filling the orders. So, you know, it gets a little tricky at nighttime when people are getting late. They're late, so I understand, you know, but... You know, this is the front counter. It's a very simple setup. You walk in, you get greeted by uh, an employee. You're either gonna sit down, you're gonna take out, you're gonna pick up. What's the majority in. of your take? Is it like, what's the percentage takeout to dine in? I don't know the exact percentage, but we it's mostly takeout yeah. and uh, you know the delivery apps. But we have a, this thing is always full. Is it really? Dinner time, lunch time, it fills up. Sometimes it'll stay full all day long. Uh, all the way through dinner time and it'll stay full. As there's some nights, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, we have a 40 minute wait for a table. Wow. Yes, yeah, people tell us all the time we need a bigger That's place. That's a good thing though. Yeah, it's a great thing. I just, I don't like people waiting. Yeah, My whole sucks. thing is trying to be express and yeah. then people have to come and wait, so. But it's pizza, so people eat pizza fast. Yeah. It's a quick It's thing. a start too, like you guys are new. Like you've only been here for a year, right? One year, yeah. yeah. So that's not a bad here, sign. So. Yeah, it's been real good. And know? what kind of pizza do you guys serve? New York, what else do you serve? We got Sicilian slices, that's a deep dish. I guess it could be considered like a Chicago style pizza, yep. Detroit, you know, it's the, the, the thicker one, but up north we call it a Sicilian. So I got the regular Sicilian with cheese and sauce, and then I got what's called a Brooklyn Sicilian, and that's um, 
it's got sauce on the top and the cheese underneath the sauce. It's 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 a nod to uh, L&B Spumoni Gardens. They're over in Gravesend, Bensonhurst area, and uh, they've been there 100 years. They're a real famous pizzeria in Brooklyn, so everybody loves their pizza. So yeah. I kind of copied them, you know, and called it the Brooklyn because that's where they're from. And uh, people love it. I got people driving from all over the state just to get this pizza. It's really crazy. Like we even had a guy come from Fort Lauderdale just for a couple slices of pizza. Yeah, <laughs> how far away is that for people watch it? It's like six hours, that's five crazy. hours. How'd they find you? Is it three hours? Oh, it's still that's far for pizza. But Instagram, the Instagram, you know, we in the beginning I was just posting regular pizza videos and trying to like engage with local places around here and get people people's attention and um, I had a friend of mine he's a comedian he came in and did a video where he hugs me he just moved down from Staten Island it's a real close friend of mine and he came to visit me and he's like oh let's do a video I said sure no problem and he just like hugs me after he takes a bite of the slice and that thing went like four million views I'll see you later bro it went like four million views on his Instagram wow he didn't do a collab post so you can't see it on our page but if you go to his page you can see it but uh, so what happened from that post, we started getting a lot of followers, but not like a lot of real actual customers. Got it. We got more, people were coming in and they seen the video, but we got a lot of followers and, and in the area, we attracted the attention of a local foodie. Yeah. Uh, beer foodie cutie, Genesis, it's, you know, she was, that, you know, she was amazing. For us, she transformed our business in, with one Instagram. Really? When I tell you she's a local foodie, she's probably one of the most popular ones in Orlando. Does she do pizza or everything? She does everything, you know? She goes to Disney, she eats at all different types of restaurants that she likes to eat at. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't hit you with the standard, hey, I charge X amount of dollars to come do a bit. She just came in because she heard about the place. I sent her a message like, hey, I'd love to have you in. She didn't charge you any money? Nope. Wow. None. She came in. I can I of course I hosted her yeah. and I gave her the meal for free, you know, and she came and she came back too after but when she first came in, she did the video <clears throat> of the Brooklyn Sicilian and this video is not a million views, but I'm telling you within a week the entire business was transformed. We no longer could do it with the with the staff that we had. I had to hire phone girls, I had to hire extra waitresses, I had to hire a dishwasher, a prep guy, I had to find a steady pizza guy. I could no longer just make pizza. I now had a whole operation that I had to oversee. And it was it was pretty overwhelming. Like we couldn't keep a Sicilian slice in stock for months. Months. And then she came back and that was cool because she likes the food. They're great people. I love them. What they did for us, I can never repay them with, you know, anything, you know, but love and gratitude. So but they were the they were the catalyst for sure. You've been making pizza your whole life. Did you take the recipes that you had and bring them down here? Yeah, so basically I took I took like a little piece of every place I worked at. Like I grew up working for my dad and my family in the restaurant business. My grandfather came from Sicily in the 60s to this country to make pizza. My dad was born in Sicily. He grew up in the pizzeria in Brooklyn. And naturally, I, that's what I did. You know, every every son does what his father does at first, right, kind of? Yeah. So I naturally just joined the pizza team and started making pizzas and hanging out in the pizzerias. But I branched out. I, I went to work for different places and I got different jobs over the years. And I took a little bit of everything I liked from each guy that I worked with and like, my Sicilians, like, it comes from this guy that I, that he was a baker, and he showed me how to do Sicilians, and ever since then I do them that way. I took a little bit from everywhere I went, and it's a mix, but a lot of it, the foundation is all my dad and my family. You know, the recipes for the sauces and the dough, and most, it's just techniques I learned over the years that I added to the, right. to the mix, you know? So what's the biggest difference in owning a pizza shop in Florida versus in New York or New Jersey? Uh, in New York, it's like a dime a dozen, you know, good pizzas everywhere. You still got bad pizza in New York. That's why I say it's not the water, because <laughs> yeah. you know, if it was the water, then every pizzeria in New York would be phenomenal, but yeah. they're not, so it's not the water. But there's like a lack of good New York cultured pizza, Italian food down here. Like, this don't exist. Like, this vibe, this environment, yeah. you come in and, you know, I got the dance music playing. I got, it's an attitude. Yes, it's a, it's a vibe. You come in, you feel comfortable. 
I didn't want, we didn't want the upscale wine glasses and white tablecloths kind of thing. We wanted people to feel comfortable, bring their family, come with the kids and yeah. not have to feel like they have to be quiet, like it's a library. Right. You know, we like that energy. Yeah. We like people coming in and having a good time. These customers get up and start dancing, you know, <laughs> when they hear a song they like. It's, it's fun. People come to watch the games with us. It's... It's a great vibe. I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Is there anything you learned over the last year that you wish you would have known in the beginning? <clears throat> yeah, there's plenty. Like, I've learned over the year. Chase your dreams. Well, chase your dreams, but one of the things that I, I learned over these is how I respond to some negativity, right? This guy's got to reel me back all the time because I, I'm so prideful in yeah. what we do, and I... It's, it's, for me, it's a legacy, it's dynasty, right? I'm third generation, so everything I do is so important to me, and I'm so meticulous with how I make pizza and prepare food, and, you know, when you get someone that's maybe having a bad day, or, you know, they got a mistake, and they want to flame you, or, you know, try and trash you, I get a little bit defensive, and I want to, I want to lunge, and I got to get real back. But I've been better. I've been better. I've been much better. Sometimes so, it's easy to take like 24 hours before you respond, like right. cool off a little bit. Right. Because then it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Now I'm not mad anymore. But yeah, in, the, in the initial beginning days, when we had a couple of iffy people come around, it was uh, it was hard to like <laughs> to hold it in. It's definitely hard when you're running a business and it's like you put all your heart and soul into the business and then someone's like, oh, that pizza sucked. Right. You're like, what the fuck? Most of the people loved it like, and still love it. We're super busy. You know, um, all the New Yorkers that came in, they know. So, and they, this place is packed all yeah. the time. So I wasn't, that was one of the things he was saying. He's like, bro, one person out of all these people, it doesn't matter. They don't like it, that's fine. It's not for everybody. And that was it. That's all I needed to hear. And I was like, ah, you're right. Whatever. Right. Yeah, Let's right. keep it moving. This is uh, oh, one hey. of our influences that came in here. Yes, I'm Bruce. Nice hey, to meet Bruce. you, buddy. Nice, nice to, to meet you. I'm Nico. Nico. From, uh, Food on the Spectrum. Oh, yeah. nice, buddy. Nice to meet you. Yeah, there's a sticker right here. Food on the Spectrum. Oh, yeah. That's, that's my so buddy. Cool. He just uh, he just hit 5,000 followers. So if you guys right. have Congratulations. That's already, awesome, man. Go so follow my buddy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of that's course. Awesome. But we're doing a giveaway, right, real quick? Yeah, we're doing a giveaway. All right. So your menu's not big at all. Like you have a nope. you have a good size menu, but it's not big. No, we want it to be more of like an express, fast paced, you know, pizza and wings, appetizers kind of place. Um, the bonus for us is that we have my dad in the kitchen. Yeah. So he can do anything. My dad has worked at high end restaurants in Manhattan. There's a place called uh, the Palm. Yeah. In the Palm restaurant, it's it's a famous place. They have um, a painter on that works there, and when a famous person comes in, they paint the face on the wall. It's the Palm Restaurant. Yeah. It's a very famous place. That's and he was a sous chef over there. He worked there for a while. He learned a lot as a saute guy. And he brought that, plus his experience, to everything he did after that. So when you try, like, you wouldn't expect the chicken marsala that comes out of this place to be what it is because of him being in the kitchen, you know. Um, so that's the added bonus. Like, our pizza's great. We got good appetizers. But then the pastas, too. You know, it's just, you could come here and get anything and it'll be a win for dinner. Right. That's the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> that was he awesome. said, uh, he said, I'm sorry for being in the way. I said, no, you're not in the way. I would have put you away. Don't worry about it. So this is Mario. He wasn't intended to be in this video, so I kind of forced him in because he's got a great personality and he's really the family part of this family business. And I thought it was very important to bring him in to kind of share his background and his story because... Doughboy's Pizzeria wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Mario Sr. So this is the part where I brought him in. We're going to share a little bit of his story, and I hope you enjoy it. How's it, how's it like working together? It's good. It's is great. It? You, you like working with me, It's son? funny because he used to work for me. Yeah. And now I work for him. That's <laughs> awesome. And then he used to know everything, and now I know everything. He thinks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told him, he says, you're still young. I said, what I forgot, you still got to learn. <laughs> That's right. I told him he's out of style. He's forgotten more about the pizza business than you'll ever know. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a saying. Should I say it? Uh, yeah, say it. Again. There's a saying. Um, that, that's, okay. that's great. You can put that part. <laughs> Nobody understands. Nobody understands. <laughs> Only the Italians yeah. are going to laugh. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so how uh, how long you guys have you worked together before this place though, right? Yeah, my place sure. in Jersey. Every okay. pizzeria that he's ever been in or worked in or owned, I've either been there as a kid at the table coloring or in there working, cleaning off the tables, filling the sodas. Like I was always 
you know, when I was a kid, Saturday mornings used to come around and my brothers wanted to stay home and play with their friends and I wanted to go hang out with my dad, so I would go to Pizza Pizzeria. That's great. I Funny was the only thing. one. Out of all of out of all of the grandkids, all of my cousins, the whole family, I'm the only one that makes pizza. Yeah. Only one. None Funny of my thing cousins, is this, nothing. he used to come to my store in Jackson, New Jersey. And I used to make him clean like 120 pounds of chicken cutlet, take all the fat <laughs> off of it. Guess what he's got me doing now? Sam came back to fish, they say, right? Double. Double. <laughs> Double. Double. Yep. He's doing like six Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. What's it like working for your son now? Is it fun? Oh, it's great. Is it's it? great. Yeah. You know, I, I'm proud of him. I love watching him and being successful. Him, Mike, you know. Yeah. I know Mike since he's a baby also. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to see them oh, yeah. grow. And, and, and accomplish themselves. Where did you learn how to make pizza? He said you worked in some fancy restaurants, too. I used to work at the Palm Restaurant in Manhattan. Yeah. I used to work at uh, Frisco's in Manhattan. It was a steakhouse. Okay. Uh, I used to work down here in Florida, a place called Joseph's Classic Market. But my t teaching came from my dad and my oldest brother. Okay. You know, they told me, I, it was funny because I didn't know how to make pizza. My father used to like to go to the OTB and bet on the horses. Yeah. So he used to put a, a crate, a case of tomatoes in front of the, where he was making pizza before so I could reach the top, you know, so I could see it. Yeah. And he put the case of tomatoes, they told me, I'll be back in about a half hour. <laughs> there you go. He would give me screens. He says, put it on here, you make it nice around, don't worry about it, put it in the oven. And that's where I learned how to make pizza. That's fantastic. It, it was a great time, my father. He was a good oh, guy. That's amazing. This is a great story. You guys should be... That is like happy that you can work together because some families I love can't. It. My whole no. You know, Listen, oh yeah, no. We, me, Listen. him, my other boys. We're. It's like whatever I could do for you, I do for you. Whatever you could do for me, you do for me. And I'm here, you know. And I, I enjoy it because I put in the hours that he needs, and I get to take off the hours that I need. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you get to be with your grandkids. Yeah, my grandchildren's and, in the Sunshine yeah, State. Yeah, right. I get to mock him every once in a while when he's really busy. I like to go out and say, "You need a hand or something." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, we're great together. You gotta put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm not recording. It was called the Boss of the Sauce. Yeah. And every year they would do a contest. They would get like the 30 of the most best restaurants and pizzerias in South Jersey. And they would have a contest who had the best sauce. Yeah. And okay, I heard about that. You heard about yeah. that? It was in 2005, I think. And um, first year I took second place. Second year, I took second place, and third year, I took first place. Nice. But it was nice. It was just, it's just a lot of fun. You get to meet all the other pizzeria owners. Yeah, yeah. And then in 2009, I took best pizza on Staten Island. Wow. Yeah, I have the article up there. I don't know if you saw it. No, I'm gonna, I'll catch that. Staten Island yeah. Advents. Yeah. That's crazy. It was great. It's great. You know, I love what I do. I tried different things. I tried doing construction. I hate the cold weather. Yeah. I tried doing a deli. I almost sliced my finger off. I said, forget about this. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. But I, I just love making pizza. See, the, like we had a table here last night, you know, regular customers, and I'm like, "What are you doing, pizza?" I says, "Hold on, I make you something nice." I made like a nice focaccia bread yeah. with chicken parmesan with vodka sauce inside of it. Then for the girlfriend, I made a nice uh, fresh tomato, fresh mozzarella, roasted peppers, balsamic uh, reduction, and pesto. Oh, that sounds great. So, and but when I see the smile on their faces, that just makes my whole day. So I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good right now." Yeah. Like right now, I'm making Italian Jamaican beef patties. Huh. I'll make you try it before you All leave. Right. Okay. It's a little bit on the spicy side, not too much, but like it's spicy. really good. Yeah. I just made this, so I'll make you guys try some. How's that? That sounds great. Awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What's the, is pizza still the top seller? Mm-hmm. By far? Yeah, by far, pizza, you know? <clears throat> That's what people come here for, the pizza. And then it's so funny, because I was talking to a gentleman, he comes in for two slices all the time. <clears throat> He's part of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chamber of something for the area and he's always in here he gets two slices that's it he's never gotten anything else not a garlic not, not nothing else <laughs> and he's like well do you guys like serve pasta and stuff and i'm like have you not had anything else <laughs> he's like no he's like the pizza's so good i can't get past the pizza it's and there's a lot of people like that but then you know some customers have branched out and started trying different yeah. stuff and um they love it you know my dad it, we always say like imagine growing up with like all this good food and then you gotta go eat somewhere it's like i'm a hard critic because yeah. <clears throat> i'll never write a bad review same i will never i don't care what kind of experience i had in a restaurant i will i'd rather fight the owner than <laughs> than write a bad I review i said the same thing i said i'll never leave a bad review you just don't no. go back no that's, that's like how, right you just don't go back right listen people got families yeah. and a bad review can really change uh somebody's business and hurt them yep and i know you know what that means so i would never 
I don't care what it is. I'll never Same. write a bad review. Every business has bad reviews. It's gonna happen. So, so the pizza was maybe overcooked, but the the appetizer stuffed garlic now was really good, she said. Yeah. But when she gave a review, she gave us one star and said the pizza was burnt. I'm like, well, why would you do that and not say how good the stuffed garlic now was? And you could have just called me and I give you another pizza. Exactly. Like that's it's a what, burnt pizza. It's... We should teach them what they need to do. Like every business owner, if yeah. you call them and be like, hey, my pizza sucked, they're right. gonna be like, what can I do to make it better? So going back to employees, right? I have an employee here. She's my She's an 18 year old phone girl. And you know, you think young generation, they don't wanna work, they don't. This girl will check the reviews every day, bring me a bad review, print out the receipt from this person's order, and say, I need to call this person because they left a bad review. Really? Imagine that. That's it's amazing. Your girl, like, you wanna talk about an employee that like, cares. cares a little bit? Like, she, that's caring. And I've turned around a few you know, bad reviews off of the strength of her, like, bringing it to my attention, because I don't really like to check the reviews. Yeah. I don't like to, because it puts me in a bad mood. Even yeah. though there's not many bad ones, but if I see a thousand good ones and one bad one, yeah. it ruins my day. I know how that goes. So I, I don't check them. He checks them for me. He does all the responding for me. But when she brings it to my attention, like, I'll call the person. That's a great employee. Yeah. Great team member to have. Like, keep, keep her as long as you can. I've, so we were just talking that you got that influencer to come in, and everybody ask me about getting business and the first thing I do when I look at people who are asking about getting more customers like check out the reviews right you check the reviews sure. what are the people saying who are actually customers currently right and if the if the reviews aren't good it's going to really put exposure on either the service is bad or the product isn't good so you're lucky that when you had that influencer come in, the yeah. pizza's obviously good because those customers kept coming back after that, got, they got notice. It stayed busy, you know, for a while we were like side-eyeing each other, like how long is this gonna last? Is it, you know, is it gonna taper off? Is it gonna end? We would, you know, we were just in limbo, right? Because it, it was so, it went from, you know, we're kind of busy, we got a little local buzz to boom. And we just was out of here. And then it stayed like that for months. All the way through the summer. That's good though. That means your pizza was good. Right. So that's right. And we used to joke like, imagine the pizza sucked, <laughs> <laughs> and we had all these people coming in here. It would have been horrible. But you use but good quality products and everything. That's one of our biggest things when we first came up with this idea. You know, I know he's a business and numbers guy, and it was one of the conversations we had. Like, food cost is going to be a little high because we're going to use the best stuff. I'm talking from pepperoni to cheese to sauces. Everything that we use is going to be the most, the best quality that I know of for, you know, and that's it. And we use all the best stuff and we don't cut any corners. There's no nickel and diamond with the cheese or trying to, yeah. you know, go cheap with anything. We want to give people the best pizza possible at a fair price, you know, and I think we've achieved that pretty much. How do you stay consistent with that though? Because are you guys cooking in the kitchen all the time? Um, so I'm always here. I'm here, you know, five, five, six days a week. My dad also is here. My father, who taught me everything I know. Is he the one that said he's gonna push me out of the way? Yeah. yeah. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, in a good way. Okay. I said sorry. He's a he's funny like, guy. That's he's why a, he's yeah. a funny yeah, totally. guy. He's got that totally. New York, you know, ball buster. Well, attitude. I was in his way. Yeah. I said sorry. He's like, you don't need yeah. to say sorry. If you, if I need you, if you're in my way, I'll just push you out of the way. Like, Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, he's he's my dad's. Oh, very special to me. Yeah. He's my best friend. He told me everything I know. That's great. And um, so he, he works here with you. He moved down here to be with me. Right? That's fantastic. So he had a pizzeria in Jersey, and when I told him what was happening here and that I needed him, he sold and he moved down. Fantastic. And he came down and he's been with me ever since. It's been like five months now. So you're a lucky guy. You guys work together. You're friends. You work with your dad. I got my dad here. Told me everything, and yeah. he and and he loves what he does. Like he loves it. I, I love it too. But you want to talk about somebody who loves this business and loves cooking and love. He's making something different every day. There's something brand new that he makes every day. That's awesome. Yesterday he made a pork loin bacon wrapped. Uh, Rock that up roll. I don't know. But <laughs> it was it was good. I saw that. No. And everything he makes is always good. So you know he's. So my dad's here on the days that I'm not here. So he, you know me and him are quality control. We yeah. make sure that the stuff stays good, stays consistent. Our employees are extremely important. You know, good employees will keep your business consistent, keep everything good, and bad employees will do the opposite. Yep. But. You know, having good employees is important. You gotta take care of your people and they take care of you. Is it hard to find team members here in oh, this yeah. area? Everywhere, yeah. I, I, it's what I've heard from everywhere. It's hard to find good, you know. I just heard a lot of people in the Florida having a hard time. 
So that's what I've heard. I've yeah. heard it's hard to find people to work, but you know, you gotta you gotta stick it out. You gotta train people, you gotta work with people, you gotta be better yourself yep. so that these people could be better for you. So, you know, I got a guy that came here, he didn't know anything, and I stuck it out, you know, I fired him a hundred times in my head. <laughs> but he's the hardest working guy. He's the hardest working guy we have. He's such a hard worker, yeah. but you know, he was just didn't know a lot, and yeah. now he's. I trust him. You yeah. know, now I could go to the store, I could go pick up my kids, I could leave, and he's good. You know, so that's great. You got to work with people. Yeah, sometimes it takes a little while. <laughs> I fired yeah. him a hundred times in my head. That's mm -hmm. so funny. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've done that a million times. Fired people in my head. And I'm just like, <laughs> you suck it out of here. And, but you know what it is. You don't want to. What do they say? Bite your nose to yeah. spite your face, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're handicapped. So you take the body, and he's. You're either gonna get so fed up with it that then you're gonna you know yeah. fire somebody or you know you try to work with them and correct them and fix them and mold them train them into what they're gonna be and this kid is light years away from where he was when we first started that's for sure you and him probably appreciate each other because you gave him like patience and he has a job now right you know right like, yeah like no he's very I've, I've bought him clothes yeah. I've uh, driven him home I take care of my guys. That's man. great. Mm -hmm. What's one piece of advice you'd give someone out there who's watching this video on YouTube and is like, I want to open a pizza shop. Like, what, what, what do they need to think about? Um, how hard can you work? How passionate you are? You know? And um, I don't think people realize how much work it is. It's, it's tremendous amount of work. Because when, even when you're not here, it's you're still working. Oh, yeah. There's always stuff going yeah. on. You, you're constantly putting out fires, and there's always something to, something to do. There's always something to clean. There's always something to fix. There's always something to, you know, work on. And it's hard work. It's, it's the hard, you know, it's very demanding. You're here 12, 13, 14 hours a day right. some days. And, you know, when you own the place, you're not just responsible for making the pizza right. or answering the phone. You're responsible for everything. So you're constantly doing everybody's job in your head as you're doing, you know, what you do. You know, and it's, it's very, it's hard. But if you know the business and you have a passion for it, it's easy. It's very easy. I would just say, make sure you stick with the good quality. Don't try to nickel and dime your employees. Make sure that people, you're giving people good stuff and you'll be fine. And customer service. Customer service, I don't want to overlook that because that's one of the most important things. Customer service and quality food. People feel comfortable and like family when they come in, they will never leave you. They'll always come back. Well, thanks Mario for having me in. Check out Doughboy's Pizza. We'll link up their website and Instagram in the description below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are doing a lot of content here at the Slice YouTube channel, and we want you to subscribe. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and if you have a comment or a pizzeria that you want us to check out, we are in the storytelling business of pizzeria restaurants. Pizza shops are our thing. If you have a story that you want us to tell or you think you have a good story to share with other pizza shop owners, drop a comment with your business below. We will take a look, and maybe we'll add you to the list of shops that we visit in the near future. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.